Hey guys, Tebo2 here, back for another look at Teeb's Doctor Who mod. Now you're probably wondering, I've already covered my mod on the channel. Well that was an old beta version of the mod before it had even released, and now we are on update 7 of all things. So yeah, a lot has changed, even just in the fundamentals of how the mod works. So I wanted to kind of give you a better look at that. So yeah, let's get right into it. Now, the first thing you're probably thinking is, I want to craft a TARDIS. Well now, making the TARDIS is a much greater um, thing than it was before. Apparently, there we go. So now it takes a slightly different recipe than it did before. Um, it's a little easier, it doesn't take defeating as many bosses, but it does have some extra steps. So you have four wood, clock, recovery compass, which requires you to go to the deep dark, obviously. We have an end crystal, so you don't actually have to visit the end to get this, which is useful. And we have a lantern on top, obviously. Um, in the middle here, though, we have the TARDIS shell. This is the new thing. And this is the thing that is going to be needing a couple more steps in order to craft. So we do this, and now we need iron ingots. We need TARDIS coral and a TARDIS coral block. Now, what are these? These are brand new things, which the only way to craft those... Well, you can't craft them, actually. You need to find them, is the thing. And where do you find them? Well, you actually need the Vortex Manipulator to find those. Because um, I thought it was a logical progression. You know, the Vortex Manipulator is basically just the cheap version of the TARDIS. So I figured you need a Vortex Manipulator to craft the TARDIS. So how do you get a Vortex Manipulator? Well, that is um, basically our final kind of step. So a Vortex Manipulator here. And if we click, there we go. Um, we need four leather, a beacon. So you are still going to need to defeat the Wither. Um, you need two diamonds, an ender pearl, and a clock to make your vortex manipulator. And once you have a vortex manipulator, of which I can grab one right now. So once you get your vortex manipulator, that is the first step to getting your TARDIS. You're going to want to click, and we have this GUI here, and we can use it to teleport, like so. So we want to enter an X value, just like so. We could click enter, and we could go there. See, it has a sound and it has a one minute cooldown and it kind of lagged a little bit, but here we go. Oh yeah, check that out by the way. There's a uh, really cool model for when it's on your arm. Oop, I've just fallen into the ocean, but yeah. Um, there's a cool model for when it's on your arm and it looks extremely cool, honestly. Um, but yeah, you also saw another button in there, which was locate rift and we'll check out what that does in a second. Um, we're waiting for our cooldown, but I want to show you uh, some of the mobs in the mod. We can already see some. Uh, and these are the sea devils. I want to show you these on land real quick. But yeah, they don't do anything on land. Their primary purpose is water. So this is a sea devil. And yeah, they're obviously, they appeared in a recent special and in the classic series as well. And yeah, um, as the name implies, they live in water. So yeah, they don't do anything on land because basically they're coded to swim. And you can see they are actually extremely fast swimmers. And yeah, if I was in survival, they would be able to catch up with me, no problem. They are very fast swimmers and very dangerous in that regard. They're basically like drowns. Um, and you already saw another mob. This is a Silurian. Um, these also spawn in the overworld. Um, if you don't know, the sea devils and Silurians were actually the native species of Earth before humans came along. So yeah, they spawn in the overworld. And Silurians spawn sometimes on the surface, um, but really just in dark areas. So like under trees, for example. Um, but their primary spawning location is underground, because Silurians kind of migrated underground when the, they thought the moon was going to crash into the earth, I believe. So yeah, but I like the model in them. They look really cool. The eyebrows look a bit cheesy, though. Honestly, I might change that in the future. But yeah, um, there's a couple of mobs. So yeah, let's get back to making our TARDIS now, now that we've had that little break. Um, and what we need to do is locate Rift, because a Rift is going to help us get TARDIS Coral. So we click Locate Rift. You can only do this with the Sonic or with the uh, Vortex Manipulator. And actually, the Rift will not spawn until you have a Vortex Manipulator. And, uh, okay, it spawned us underground a little bit, but it should have spawned our Rift. There it is. So I think that's a bug. You're supposed to spawn inside the Rift. I will get that fixed. Check that out. Okay, so we have this little cave, and it looks interesting for sure. But yeah, the big thing is the fact that it's kind of this mixture of the overworld, the nether, or the nether, and the end. Uh, and right here, we have kind of this thing connecting them all. And this is the rift block. You can't actually obtain this in survival mode. Um, but what this is going to do in the future is allow you to recharge your TARDIS when you land it on top of this. 
So you are going to want to remember where the rift is in your world. I believe it's different every single time. Um, the only real constant is that it's underground. So yeah, um, there is our rift. And you can see right here, these coming out of the walls are TARDIS coral blocks. So when you mine those and you'll get your TARDIS coral. And like I said, you want to use those in the recipe to make your TARDIS shell. Uh, I don't know why this isn't letting me <laughs> type, but you get the point. Um, I won't show you off every recipe in this video anyway, so it's all right. Um, so moving on to a couple more things in the mod, you can see we have quite a few creative tabs that weren't there before, like this food one I know is new. We have quite a few foods in the mod. A couple of these can be found, a couple of them can be crafted, and a couple of them are obtained in different ways. This is the food cube. This is from the first Doctor's TARDIS, in which there was a food machine that kind of made like artificial food. And so that's what this is. You can eat it, it doesn't really do anything. It's just a normal food source. But yeah, like I said, you find that in the food machine in the first Doctor's TARDIS, which we'll get to in a little bit. Here we have jelly babies. These are crafted and you can eat them just like so. Here we have celery. Celery is found in various structures in the world. And when you eat this, it will actually clear any poison or wither effects, which is really cool. This is the fish fingers. Again, this is another one that I believe is crafted and also found in a structure. Coffee is made by the coffee machine in the 14th and 15th Doctor's TARDIS and also found in a few structures. And lastly, carrot juice, once again, can be crafted and found in a few structures. So yeah, that's our food items tab. Let's move on to our Doctor Who items tab and you can see this has a huge upgrade as well. Um, a lot of this was here before. The TARDIS Coral is obviously new. Um, the TARDIS Key is going to be used with our TARDIS as well as the Statenheim Remote. And then this is the Sonic Blaster. And then Sonic Screwdrivers have had a huge upgrade. We now have loads of different Sonic Screwdriver designs, so I'm just going to grab a few of them. Uh, but we have every single Sonic Screwdriver design from the show, including the 14th and 15th Doctor's Screwdrivers. The Sonic Screwdrivers, we have the 2nd Doctors, the 3rd Doctors, the 4th Doctors, the War Doctors, and the 11th Doctors as well as obviously all the others that I mentioned. But yeah, I'll just show you with these ones. They all do the exact same thing. Um, they can interact with various blocks. So the first is grass. So you can till grass and it'll make a cool sound, just like so. Now the other things it can interact with is a lot of redstone blocks and some other various blocks. So for example, if we get a trapped chest, if we get an iron door, if we get a redstone lamp, and if we get TNT, these are just some of the blocks it can interact with. If we get an iron door, we can open it and close it, just like so. And that is an extremely cool function. We have our redstone lamp here, and this will get lit up, just like so. We have a trap chest, and a trap chest, if you don't know, is going to activate a redstone pulse. So if we put TNT here and open the chest, it's going to blow up the TNT. But if we shift right click with our sonic screwdriver, It'll actually change it to a normal chest. There was a little visual change. You probably couldn't see it. But now if we did that, it won't do anything because we've disarmed the trap. And finally, we can arm TNT with our sonic screwdriver. Whoops. Just like so. And as you will see, the rift blocks are indeed unbreakable. So yeah, you are going to need to come back to the rift if you want to recharge your TARDIS when I add that feature in the future. Now, the next items in this tab are going to be things like these Dalek accessories. And these are pretty cool. We have a Dalek eye stock, which looks like this in your hand. And you can wear it, and it actually has this really cool overlay. Now I'm going to add a couple different variants of the eye stock with a couple different overlays. I already have a couple more done, but yeah. This is just the basic new series Dalek, and it doesn't do anything. It just looks extremely cool, in my opinion. Now, if you want to go the full conversion and become a real Dalek, you can use the Dalek Sucker and the Dalek Gunstick. And check that out. Now, this takes arrows to fire. I might add a dedicated laser item, but for now, it just takes arrows, as I said. And yeah, this does the exact same damage as an actual Dalek, and all of these can be dropped from the various Daleks. And the Dalek Sucker can also be used to interact with Dalek control panels, which I'll show you when we get to Scaro. Now back into here, we have a couple more items. We have Mercury, which is liquid, which doesn't do a lot yet. It just poisons you when you step in it. Um, we have fur, which is a drop from a mob, and that can be used to make a fur coat, which is gonna come in handy later. Uh, judicial wig, fez, bow tie, 
top hat, and gas mask. These are a couple of, obviously, um, clothing items in the mod. We can see the fur coat looks very cool on us. We're going to keep that on us. We are going to need it later. The judicial wig is from the Star Beast and looks very cool. We have, of course, the iconic fez and bow tie. And these look really cool. I love these. Um, they don't do much. All of these, I believe, are crafted with fur. Um, except for the top hat, which actually is dropped by the Whispermen, which we'll see when we go to Trenzalore. So yeah, you can probably tell already, there are a lot more planets in the mod that we're going to explore. I don't believe there were any when we did the beta review. And this is the gas mask, which is dropped from the Empty Child, and will protect you against poison. So yeah, a couple of these have some cool practical uses. But moving on, we have quite a few more items still. We have spacesuits. We're also going to need spacesuits later on. I'm going to show you each design of the spacesuit. There are two different ones. So we have a regular spacesuit, and this is crafted primarily with wool and iron, and it looks like this. And this is going to protect you from radiation on Scaro and from oxygen loss on the moon and on Mars. So yeah, and if you want one that adds some armor points, you can get this reinforced spacesuit, which is made by crafting the spacesuit together with iron armor, and this one as I said, will have its own armor points. So let's check that out. And this one looks like this. It is based on, um, I believe the episode 42, I wanna say. Yeah, that sounds right. But yeah, this is very cool looking armor set and I will keep that on me so that when we go to the planets, we will be doing okay. So yeah, finally in this tab, we have our Dalekanium. So we have a Dalekanium armor set, Dalekanium scrap, Dalekanium ingot, and a tool set and a mallet that doesn't actually do anything yet, but it does look kind of cool in your hand, just like so. So yeah, the Dalekanium is obviously dropped by Daleks. It does not come in an ore form yet, but you can find these scraps in structures or dropped from Daleks and they are used to make Dalekanium ingots. It's very similar actually to how the um, netherite scraps work and that you have to combine it with something else, which in this case is Scarrow Stone. So you actually cannot craft this if you're just in the overworld, even though you can find Daleks in the overworld, um, you cannot craft this until you go to Scaro, which I thought was fair because it does actually give you a couple of effects, like I think resistance and levitation. So yeah, moving on to the next tab, let's check out a few more mobs. So we have loads more mobs than we had before. We have, of course, our Daleks, of which I'm not gonna show you all of them, just a couple various Daleks. And I can already hear one. <laughs> Hello, Dalek. This is a invasion pilot Dalek. And the invasion Daleks, I believe, are the most common find, common kind that you will find in the overworld. And yeah, they make their little ambient sounds and they shoot lasers, which I'll show you in a moment. So this is the dead planet Dalek. And this one, funnily enough, can only be found on Scaro. Um, which is accurate to the story because these Daleks, I believe, could only run on static electricity and they needed that from the floors in their city. So yeah, let's go into survival and see how we fare against it. And we of course have our reinforced armor, so we'll see how well we do, because that's about as good as iron armor. So yeah. So yeah, before we get hit, I just want to tell you, um, obviously that Dalek was shooting kind of a steam at us, and that did some damage, or it did not do some damage because it didn't manage to hit us, but <clears throat> that would do some damage, and also that would actually paralyze us to where we can't actually hit anything, and we have a slowness effect. Now different Daleks have different effects and also different looks to their lasers, so all 60s Daleks have that smoke laser that gives paralysis, and other Daleks will have different lasers. So let's just show the paralysis. And check that out. We have weakness and slowness. And we are going to die if we're not careful. But yeah, that's our first Dalek. Let's show a couple more. So over here, we have our invasion pilot Dalek. I think we already saw this one. But yeah, like I said, these ones spawn in the overworld only and are the most common kind. And they have the exact same laser type. Chase Dalek, basically just the dead planet Dalek, except it spawns in the overworld and looks slightly different. These Daleks are a little loud, so I'm having to kind of step away. This is the Master Plan Supreme Dalek, another 60s one. And this one looks extremely cool. I love the color scheme on it. 
but otherwise it's basically the same and again they all have that same paralysis attack all the 60s daleks this one is the time war dalek obviously from the new series so it's gonna have a different laser type and we're gonna show that off also has different sounds and its laser is gonna look a bit different and i'll just show you that So yeah, slightly different sound and a slightly different laser type that is more akin to the uh, Dalek gunstick that I showed you earlier. But yeah, that's just a couple of our Daleks. Um, again, every, well, most Daleks have different abilities from one another. Like, I'll show you just a couple here. Exelon Dalek, the Bomber Dalek, uh, the Imperial Dalek, uh, the Special Weapons Dalek, the Renegade Dalek, and that's probably it. I'll just show you these ones. So the... Exelon Dalek actually has a rapid fire to its weapon and you know what I'm gonna do I'm gonna use villagers as my example for the shooting because this is a little easier they do attack villagers yeah as you can see that one has a rapid fire to its gun which makes it quite dangerous but its weapon is extremely weak compared to the other Daleks so you do still have a chance I would say um this though is the Bomber Dalek from Destiny of the Daleks. And this one has a bunch of bombs strapped to it, and if you touch it, it will explode. So let's actually try that out. Hello. Yeah. And I needed to do it before I act it actually got a chance to uh, shoot me, because I would have died, but yeah, if you touch it, it will explode. So yeah, there are more Daleks, of course, and a bunch of other mobs are spawning, but we're not going to check them out yet. <clears throat> Here we have the Imperial Dalek from Remembrance of the Daleks, and we have the Renegade Dalek, also from that same story. Now these two, if you've watched the story, will fight each other. Let's check that out. And as you can hear, they have their own laser sound as well, which is extremely cool. And the Renegade Dalek won, but not for long, because the Imperials had the Special Weapons Dalek on their side. So let's check that out. This guy has a massive cannon on the front of him. So let's see how this fares. And it has kind of a large buildup. You can see it explodes. Check that out. He did not stand a chance at all. Um, obviously these Daleks don't have great accuracy with their weapons, so you do still stand a chance against them. But yeah, the special weapons Dalek is one that you're gonna have a lot of trouble fighting. I can pretty much guarantee you. So yeah, here's a few more mobs. We have Sontarans, and we have Armored Sontarans based on their new series designs. So yeah, we have Sontarans, and these actually have their own structure in the overworld but most of the times. So here's one, kind of spawned in the middle of the ocean, and you can see it looks like this, very small and simple. And if we walk inside, there is a spawner for the classic series Sontarans and some controls. And we have our little loot shulker box here with some potatoes, some iron, and some weapons, which is very kind of Sontarany. Um, so yeah, <laughs> nice little structure, probably the first you're going to encounter in the mod. We have a few more mobs here, I'm not going to go over every single one, but we have our Cybermen. Now the Cybermen were in the video I made prior, but I have so many more variants now, it's kind of crazy, um, so I'll show those off. So this is the 10th we'll Planet Cyberman, like we'll of course like has the iconic us. voice, and all of these Cybermen will convert villagers when they kill them, so if we get a villager in here, it's not going to do too well. Good. Check that out. So you couldn't see it all that well because there were so many Cybermen crowding, but another one did spawn when they killed the villager. So yeah, all Cybermen will be able to convert villagers. And this is another one. Okay, this one's the Cyber Rider based on spare parts where it's kind of this half converted policeman on a horse. And he makes the same sounds. Um, I believe he's actually a neutral mob. I might be mistaken on that. But he's found only on Mondas. So yeah, there is some kind of um, difference as to whether certain mobs spawn in different dimensions, like I said with the Daleks. And likewise, there are a bunch of Cybermen that can only be found on Mondas. So here's another Cyberman. This is the Moonbase Cyberman, and as the name implies, this one only spawns on the moon. It actually has its own structure there, so we'll check that out in a little bit. The Tomb Cyber Controller. This one, I believe, only spawns on Mondas as well. 
And yeah, I really like his look as well. Um, another Cyberman we have here is the Invasion Cyberman. This one will spawn in the overworld only and looks like this. Extremely cool. And I'll show a couple more Cybermen just because I can. So let's check out the Earthshock Cyber Controller, sure. Cyber Cyberman. Uh, let's check out some of the more new series ones. So the Cyber Shade, um, the Siberiad Cyberman, the Wooden Cyberman. Uh, yeah, we'll get that out in a second. But the Earthshock Cybermen all have guns, which is very nice. And you can see this is the Cyber Controller. Um, and yeah, he looks very nice as well. These guys, again, can spawn in all dimensions except for the controllers, which only spawn on Mondas. Um, we have the Cyber Cybermen. These are very loud, but they're obviously our new series Cybermen. And they look very nice. Um, they also had a slight retexture from the beta version, so they look slightly nicer now. Um, over here, the Cyber Winter variant. Basically the same with black handlebars. Um... <clears throat> here we have the Cyber Shade. I'll spawn this up here. This is an animal type Cyberman, and this will actually convert animals. So if we grab, say for example, like, I don't know, a camel, sure, why not? This is actually going to get killed and converted by the Cyber Shade. Check that out. He's been converted into a Cyber Shade. So yeah, next we have the Siberiad Cyberman. This one, of course, has its own sounds and actually has a laser as well. So we can check that out against the villager. <laughs> nice. And you can see he is, of course, upgraded the villager. And I also have the Cybermen from the 13th Doctor's run as well. We have the Patient from the 12th Doctor's run. This guy spawns again only on Mondas uh, in the underground city. Here we have the lone Cyberman. He looks quite a bit different, but he behaves basically like the Siberiad Cybermen. Same thing goes with the Warrior Cybermen. And I like the look of them a lot. They got kind of the spikes along their sides and just overall look very cool. The Cyber Master is basically just that but with some Time Lord livery on it. So, you can check that out. And I really like the little headdress and the black robes. Looks extremely cool. And yeah, that's most of our Cybermen. So let's move on to some other mobs. We have Thals. These guys will spawn on Skaro, and we'll see them a bit more. Same with the Slither. Uh, the Varga Plant, same thing. The Yeti, the Ice Warrior, and we have quite a few other mobs. I'm not going to show all of them, but I'll show quite a few. The Ice Warriors will spawn on Mars, of course, and they look like this. And yeah, the Thals look like this. They will spawn on Skaro and are kind of hunted by the Daleks, but they are kind of a pacifist species, so they will not attack the player. Here we have the Slither. Now this is hostile to the Thals and will spawn on Skaro. <laughs> And this is from the episode Dalek Invasion of Earth. This is the Varga plant from, I believe, Mission to the Unknown. This is native to Skaro as well and will give you poison if you get near it. And yeah, it's basically just the living plant that's going to attack you, basically. And here is the Yeti from the second Doctor's run. This is exclusive to Trenzalore and looks like this. Mm. Yeah, it just has some bear sounds and it basically is just your normal hostile mob. So yeah. That's not all the mobs, but I probably won't go over all of them individually. Um, I will go over just a couple more here. So, for example, we have the Canine, Bessie, the Ironside Dalek, and the Time War Emperor, which we'll show off a little later. Now, the Emperor's from uh, Update 7, so it's not out at the time of my recording this, so I'll show you that as a little sneak peek. But here's Canine. Canine is crafted, actually. So this is how you craft Canine, and you'll get your Canine Spawner. We place him, and then we can just right-click to tame. And check that out. He is now tamed to us. And he actually has his own laser and is going to attack any mob that gets in our way. So we'll show that off with uh, just a random Dalek. And if we hit it, he is going to go on the attack. Check that out. He's got his own laser sound and is going to attack. And that is awesome. So Dalek versus K9. Let's see who wins. And, of course, they both have kind of terrible accuracy. 
but hey, K91, awesome. Um, you cannot actually heal him yet, so yeah, if he's not doing too well, I don't really know how to heal him. Uh, I might add that in the future, though. Here we have Bessie, the third Doctor's car. This is also craftable, just like this. And Bessie can be driven around, which is very cool. And if you press R, ignore the little thing that came up on the screen. That's just from the Essentials mod. But yeah, Bessie is a car and can be driven around just like so. Bessie is extremely cool and useful and basically is just an alternative to a horse. Finally, our last kind of mob to look at is the Ironside Dalek. This is our last kind of craftable mob. So we craft this with the aforementioned Dalek pieces and blocks of Dalekanium, which again, you need to go to Skaro to make the ingots. So this guy is kind of hard to make, but he is going to be our tameable Dalek. What happened to K9? I don't know, <laughs> but there you go. He says, would you care for some tea? And he's actually holding a little teacup. And if we right click, we can tame him just like with K9 and he is going to help us as well. If we hit this, he should attack. Check that out. <laughs> he has terrible accuracy yet again, but obviously, yeah, those are our tameable mobs. So yeah, now that we're done with the mobs, we have a ton of blocks that are exclusive to the various planets, and we have a bunch of TARDIS-related blocks. Now, all of these we will see when we get to our respective um, planets and whatnot, but let's check out the TARDIS now. 